Welcome to a new Webflow tutorial here on this Formbook channel. Um, today I'm sharing a lesson from my new Webflow expert course with you. And I've now completed all the videos from the first learning module. And in one of them, we built a tab component similar to the one you find on the Webflow homepage. And this tab component includes an autoplay function, which can also be paused and you can use images or background videos uh, for the content. This is a slightly more advanced tutorial and since we are using um, a little bit of custom code, but I do my best to explain everything in a way that's easy to follow. As always, you find the project as a free clonable linked in the video description so you can easily copy it into your own Webflow project. I have already integrated the tab component and assigned some class names here. And now let's set the wrapper to flexbox horizontal and use space between. And the tabs content should always use the available space here. And then we define the, the width uh, to the tabs menu and we give it a width of 45% now and maybe a minimum width of 35 rem to prevent it from getting too small when the browser window is resized, but you can we can change this later. And then I will add a 12 RAM padding uh, on the on the right side. And for the content, I set a minimum height of 50 RAM or let's see how small it should be, maybe 40 or something around this. And then we can give it um, a height of 85 SVH. And that way, even if the browser window is resized or smaller, it will never be smaller than the, our minimum height. Now let's take a closer look at the menu on the left side. Inside we have an Autotabs link title, which is currently visible. This should probably be an H4 styled accordingly with a text weight of medium or a semi bold. And there's also a description which is currently hidden, but we can reveal it here. And this should be styled as our copy small. And I will insert all the classes here to the other tab links as well. And as we can see here on the uh, Webflow website, by default, inactive tabs have a gray text. And we can easily achieve this because the entire link inherits a color as a, uh, all links do in this project. And we assign the variable uh, copy gray to it. And now all text inside will be colored accordingly. However, when a tab becomes active, Webflow provides us with a current state. And so we can then switch the color to our copy dark variable. Now let's take care of the background colors. We can set the default background color here to transparent for inactive tabs as well. And on the left side, we want to add a bit of spacing, but we want to not style this on the current state, but on all of these links. And Webflow applies default values here, which we can reset to zero. And on the left, I add a two rem of spacing, but at the same time, we want to keep a thin borderline that remains visible at all times. For this, we can apply a border here to a point free rem to the auto tabs menu on the left side and then i also use a transparent color here with 30 um, percent opacity and then inside each auto tab link we will add a diff called auto tabs progress which will then serve as the progress indicator later and we will set this to a width to the same width um, of point free rem and a height of let's say 50 percent for now so that we can see it and we also need to give it a background color maybe a our accent variable here and to ensure it fully aligns on the left side we will set the position to absolute and now we need to shift it exactly by the same amount as the border width so in this case a margin left of minus um, 0.3 rem but for the active tab there's actually also a border on the left side which has um, a slightly darker grayish um, background color so we can also insert a 0.3 rem here and make it a little bit darker gray maybe this tone here and then as you can see it needs to have also the negative margin of 0.3 rem to the left so it's overlaying on the uh, gray border and then we can give it an inner padding of maybe one rem for now but on the live side you can see that there's a small flickering issue and that happens because we only applied the border to the active tab. And to fix this, we actually have to set the border on all auto tab links. So let's uh, set it here. And then for the back, uh, for the color, we no, we actually need to have this one on transparent, but the active one, this one has then the, the color here, which I can paste in here. 
Additionally, we need to insert the active indicator into each of the tabs, so I paste them in here. And now I will uh, copy the code and uh, it's provided uh, in a video description. And this contains uh, the autoplay functionality for the tab component. And I will use this in an embed um, directly underneath here um, in uh, below the tab component. And it's a similar approach to what I have in my Webflow trick box where we used jQuery making it slightly more compact. But however, if you use jQuery, you must include it in the side settings before the closing body tag. And I used AI to uh, translate it into a JavaScript code so we can paste it in here into an embed after the elements are loaded. And now inside we can copy the data out of tabs element and then link. So we have to go to every link in our menu and paste in the corresponding attribute. So type in link here and then also to the second one and the third one. And then we need to attribute for the um, progress bar. So it's the data auto tabs and then bar as a value. So we go to every one of the auto tabs progress bars and paste in the attribute and also here on the other ones. And that's it for the functionality of the tab component. However, we also see that the description is always visible. Instead um, of handling this with JavaScript, we can easily control this via CSS. So I will add a custom embed here with CSS to animate this uh, properly. And the issue with such animations is that we cannot transition the height from zero pixels to auto. Um, and one trick is to use a max height from zero to maybe 1000 pixels, but that doesn't uh, work well because the animation tries to expand the 1000 pixels within like a second. And a more elegant and new solution I found online uses a display grid and to animate basically the row height. And how this works is that when, um, in this case, data auto tabs link contains the vcurrent class, which is assigned by Webflow, we transition to 1FR while adjusting the, the opacity. However, right now it doesn't work correctly because it retains its space. And the reason is that the paragraph tag inside needs to be wrapped in an um, overflow hidden container. So we can either create a global overflow hidden class and wrap it manually in a div. Since this is a global class uh, already exists in our project, I will use it here. But uh, you can also use um, a different uh, class name. But then you have to make sure that it, all the paragraph texts are wrapped inside um, this class. And then this is working on the preview, but on the Webflow side, we see that the animation is slightly slower. And we also notice that the text color transitions from dark to gray. And since we modify both the copy color and border color, we need to include them in the transition properties. So we will set the border color transition here to 200 um, milliseconds. Um, and increase it maybe to 300. Uh, similarly, um, we apply a 300 milliseconds transition to the font color, and this makes the transition way smoother now. Now let's add an option to pause the autoplay functionality. So I will add a custom element here, give it a name of auto tabs a button, and in the settings we can change the tag to a button element and should, we should give it an attribute of type uh, button because it's not in a form element. Then we can reset the standard padding styles from a button element and insert a text element, which we name auto tabs a button text. And then also our icon, which I have already prepared here in my components. And then we wrap the icon into another div element, auto tabs icon and I give it a size of maybe a one run width or 1.3. And then we can set the auto tabs button to flexbox horizontally with a gap of 0.3 or 0.5. The font color of all the elements inside of the button should be our copy gray variable. And then I can adjust the text a little bit to push it more upwards, a little bit, 0.2 rem. And then we have to wrap both elements inside another div we name um, this one auto tabs inner because this is actually the one we have to duplicate then later. So it's actually better to set the flexbox settings here to the inner element and um, delete it from the auto tabs uh, button. And then we can duplicate this one and insert our uh, pause icon, which should be here in our component uh, library. And it seems like we also have to give it a, a proper height. 
So let's do the same like the width. And that's it for the structure. We can um, move this element above our custom code here. And then we go into our JavaScript code and see that we have to give some attributes to the um, play pause uh, button elements. And so we go into the settings, give it an attribute of data auto tabs button, and then uh, play. And then another one, just a data auto tabs button. And this is like a general attribute. And with the play attribute here, you can control how it starts. So you can either choose a play or uh, pause and with the button we simply define the one that will pause everything. So if we look into the side code we see that the auto tab taps button uh, changes to pause now and if I click it again it's now playing. But we still uh, see both the play and pause uh, icons or elements here but we can fix this by uh, using CSS and also animate them. And therefore I give both of elements here um, an attribute so this one is our data out tabs button and then this is the play icon and then I give the other one the attribute of uh, pause icon and here in our custom CSS embed you can see I target the attributes play icon and pause icon both with an opacity and a transform and then we push them down by 0.6 rem and also reduce it to a zero opacity and if the auto tabs button is on play then we can um, preview the, the pause icon uh, which means that we um, hide our um, play icon. I would also position the entire autoplay button as absolute on the bottom left right now. It has no preference, so we need to set the wrapper around it to relative so that it is contained within it. And, and to keep the two from being too close together, I would also add some margin to the entire menu, maybe the medium uh, top spacer here. And if the browser window gets too small now, there's still um, some space between them. Let's look at the Webflow's example and see that the content slides in from the left here and also from the right. Additionally, there is a small border radius on the inside and some spacing. The, to implement this, we actually need to nest our content again, especially because Webflow doesn't allow us to set the display settings of these uh, tab content elements here. So that's why I wrap another div around it and insert it here. I'll call this one auto tabs content inner. We set it to 100% width and also a height and then also flexbox center aligned so we can position elements inside. We also want a padding around it. Let's keep it flexible, but for now, five rem on all sides and to see the difference right away, well, let's set the background color um, for the entire auto tabs content element. We have a dark one here in our variables. So we'll use that plus a border radius. We can use our tiny preset and we don't see the radius right now because we have to set it to overflow clip here. Inside, we also need to nest the content further as it should animate in from the left and the right. So I'll name this one auto tabs animate um, from right. And then we'll set this one to width and height 100%. And you can see the area is already smaller, but the element inside is positioned absolute. So we have to set this one to relative. And then we can also set our border radius or the tiny variable. And this uh, tab should actually be aligned to the right. That's why I apply a combo class here to the inner element is right and then set the padding to zero on the right side. And then we can uh, paste in the same structure here to the second tab which also should come in from the right. And the last one, yeah, we could adapt the same structure, but give it a, another combo class. So let's copy this inner element here. And then also here we set it to auto tabs animate from right, but we actually wanna uh, duplicate this one. We need it from the left. So let's change this one from left. And then this inner element also needs a combo class or actually we could um, delete this padding on the left side because the first uh, tab element which is coming from the right already has a combo class and this could also have the left uh, five frame padding. And then we should also set the animate div elements to overflow clip so that the 
border radius is visible. Now we add some CSS for the animation. We reset all out tabs animate from right and also from left elements because in the X direction, the right one should be shifted outward by half its width and the opacity should set to zero. And then we animate the transform at the X direction with an out quad easing and plus the opacity with an 0.8 seconds ease. And we do the same for the left side, but pushing them to the left and then moving it to opacity one and to the zero position. And when Webflow adds the VTAP active class to the VTAP pane. And these two here are the default Webflow classes, but the other uh, should be adjusted according to how you want to name them. Since it's a CSS animation, it also works in the Webflow designer. And when I switch here, we can see it's doing the animation. And if we look at the Webflow example again, they have a short pause where it fades uh, to dark before the content appears. And it also doesn't seem to come from that far outside. So instead of 50, we could maybe try 40%. So we can adjust the auto tabs component in our CSS settings here. And then we can set the fade in here from the Webflow auto tabs standard animation to maybe 600 and then the fade out to 400. That means it waits 400 milliseconds before writing the active state back as a class. And you can work with all sorts of content here, media elements, videos, text, images, and I think it looks great. Mm -hmm.